Let's say you've got some pentatonic licks that you like and you're getting good at them, but somehow all those notes in between those licks sound kind of meandering. How did those guys like Eric Clapton and B.B. King and Joe Bonamassa make their lines sound so interesting? Part of it is their incredible expressiveness, but the other part is their note choices. Some of those notes they choose, even when just purely improvising, are so colorful, so juicy. And where do they get those notes from? Let's explore how we can visualize both major pentatonic and minor pentatonic at the same time, like two different layers, creating a kind of blues super scale. It can sound like this. And by the way, all the tabs for this are available on our Patreon. <laughs> with A major pentatonic. So to find that, we can just put our pinky right there on the A note, and then we can play easy shape from there because first finger pinky rule gives us A major pentatonic, right? So that's. And then what's the shape right above that? That is what I like to call extension shape. Some people call it the box. It's just these five notes that we're interested in right now. Now hold that image in your mind, you got it? And let's add the blue notes. There's a blue note right here. And there's a blue note at the top of that shape. Right there, right? That's the root. We also want to remember where those roots are in all our shapes. So now visualize that. We've got the blue note. Now just notice in your ear that major pentatonic sound and hold that image in your mind. Make sure you've got it clear, but now throw it out of your mind because now we're going to change what we think about. We're going to think about minor pentatonic right here. So minor pentatonic works like this, right? We would put first finger on that A and we would play easy shape from there. The whole thing would be. Now we're visualizing minor pentatonic in all our favorite minor pentatonic licks. We've got all kinds of cool bends. And our root is still there, right? Of course, it's in the same place. This is a minor pentatonic. And it was there for a major pentatonic too. Now we've got that on our mind, we can visualize it, and then we can throw it out again, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna constantly switch back and forth from that major pentatonic shape to the minor pentatonic shape. So remember the major pentatonic shape again? If we just ascend it, and there's a blue note, there's the root again, right? Now throw that out of your mind and visualize minor pentatonic. There's a root there, right? So we're gonna go up major pentatonic, visualize the extension shape, the box. Now we're gonna go minor pentatonic descending. And that root. Now we've got both scales. We've got the colorful major pentatonic, the slightly kind of relaxed sound there. And then we've got the very bluesy rock and roll minor pentatonic. Combining them, now we've got some really interesting sounds. One of the things that happens for our ears, for audiences' ears, is we get a little too used to hearing the same five notes. If we're just playing in major pentatonic, we kind of get used to those notes. They sound good, but they're not adding enough variety. And then when we throw in the minor pentatonic, suddenly we've got that bit of dissonance, that really cool rock and roll bluesy sound of minor pentatonic. And going back and forth quickly, we have a kind of super scale, just imagining one and then the other, or sometimes even imagining both of them overlapping. Now we've got a really interesting group of notes. Up major, maybe go to the root, down minor. Very cool. Now let's explore it a little further by looking at some of the notes that they actually have in common. This is kind of a weird thing, but when we play the blue note of major pentatonic, 
notice that that note right there is the note from minor pentatonic. They share that note. The blue note of major pentatonic is in the minor pentatonic, it's the minor third. So that's cool, there's already some uh, similarity there. We can also see that same phenomenon down here, right? Because there was the blue note of major pentatonic. But isn't that also just the note of minor pentatonic? Again, it's the minor third of minor pentatonic. And what a great sound for resolving there. Going from the minor pentatonic to the major third of major pentatonic and maybe the root, now we have a really cool small lick that's perfect for ending licks when we want to move from major to minor to major again. Let's try that. We go up major. Now let's go down minor. Ooh, that was down minor, but with the major third and then the root at the end, right? So up major, something like that, minor. Very cool. Now let's add the blue note from minor pentatonic. There's yet another note that we can add to these layers that we're visualizing. Sometimes we're visualizing just one of these scales, the major pentatonic. Sometimes we're visualizing major pentatonic with the blue notes. Sometimes we're visualizing only minor pentatonic. And sometimes we're visualizing minor pentatonic with the blue notes. There's a lot of notes there, right? So where's the blue note in minor pentatonic? Up here, it, right there, that would be eighth fret of the G string. So we have that note as well. Let's add that when we descend the minor pentatonic. So we back up again. We're going to go up major pentatonic. Then we're going to descend minor pentatonic, add the blue note, and do that ending lick that goes minor third, major third, or if you like, minor pentatonic, major pentatonic, and then the root. So that's up, minor pentatonic. Mmm, that is tasty. Now we have both at the same time. So that's how you can start to switch scales without really digging too much into the theory. It's really just about visualizing one and then the other, or what if we can see both at the same time? Think of it like transparencies. One is laid down and then another is laid down and you see both of them at the same time. So that means we would have on the high E string, we have these notes. That's a cool order. On the B string, we would have the same kind of shape, right? Because those notes are in the major pentatonic, but that one's in the minor pentatonic. Combine those, we've got B string, the blue note of minor pentatonic, descending minor pentatonic, major third of major pentatonic, root. <laughs> Again, like I often say in these videos, it's harder to say than it is to do. We visualize it, we can see it. That's a lot of notes that we wouldn't have been playing together in the same sequence ever before unless we can visualize them separately or at the same time. Let's hear how some of these licks might sound against a jam track. It's just a 12 bar blues and A. where we use this technique. Remember, you cannot use this technique in a minor key because that major pentatonic won't sound right. Now, isn't that weird though? So I'm saying that if the song is in minor, we cannot use major pentatonic, fine. That actually makes sense, right? But if the song's in major, we're using minor pentatonic. And that's just one of those funny things that we do have to remember as guitar players, that when the key is major, and when we want that kind of bluesy or blues rock or country sound, we can use minor pentatonic even though the key of the song is major because it just sounds cool. We're used to those sounds. And that is the perfect opportunity to mix major and minor pentatonic. And this is such an easy place to do it. We just see the shape. 
and we combine them however we like. There's so many different ways you could do it. Maybe like this. <laughs> almost anywhere in a blues context, but sometimes there's a specific place to do the switch that sounds really good. And I do have a video on precisely that, so that's another good one to check out. It's right here.